Hello, hello, welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. If you've not subscribed to our channel yet, please do that now. All right, so if you've been following this project, you realize that we are down to our final three reviews before reaching the end of the complete fiction of HP Lovecraft. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you right now. Uh, today's review is the book, written 1933, possibly, not entirely sure, uh, but published 1938 after Lovecraft's death. It is described as an unfinished story. Um, just a couple pages long, but I feel like it actually is a complete story. The narrator, he finds a handwritten book of an unidentifiable age um, in a rundown old bookstore. Uh, he opens it up um, and immediately begins to feel creeped out. Uh, he takes it home, he feels like he's being followed, so obviously this book has some, has some sort of power. And the book is in Latin and it's full of spells. He begins to perform some of the spells by writing um, a large circle, a magical circle on his floor and he's in it and suddenly he is swept away through a cosmic gate um, to another world on the other end of the cosmos. Uh, he sees his self flying over green fields and below a city of alien architecture and then luckily he's able to get back to his body. Uh, but this experience it really freaks him out. He um, never feels the same. He's unopened a doorway, but he fears to use the book again for fear that um, he will be cut off from his body and from the earth that he loves. And that's it. Um, very short analysis here. Now, it's a short, pretty vague story, but it is surprisingly effective. Um, the forbidden book angle and the magical gateway angle, that is vintage Lovecraft, nothing new to see here. But there really actually is a strong undercurrent dealing with um, books and with knowledge. Sort of <clears throat> the idea that you can't unread and unlearn what you learn. Books have the power to change you, but you can't really change back. And sort of this idea that um, books are obviously beneficial, um, but they're also dangerous too. Um, Burn books! <laughs> no, not really. Um, I think um, as much of Lovecraft's work does, I think there is an autobiographical angle here. Um, he is known to have been a bookworm as a child. Books were his escape um, in an unhappy um, childhood and unhappy family life. And I think uh, <clears throat> he's sort of um, uh, proposing a warning here um, because uh, you have these adventures on paper, um, sort of these types of adventures that he writes, um, but um, you may inadvertently open up doorways sort of in your um, in your mind, in your spirit, in your happiness that are hard to shut. You'll, um, the longing that books create um, is beneficial, but it's also um, can be detrimental if um, sort of you maybe spend all of your time daydreaming instead of um, focusing on something else. Yeah, guys, that is the book. Um, believe written 1933, not found and published until after his death in 1938. Coming up soon, we'll have uh, the last two Lovecraft reviews here on Let's Talk, The Shadow Out of Time, and then we'll wrap things up with The Haunter of the Dark. So, uh, yeah, guys, uh, tune in here. Next couple of days, we'll get this Lovecraft project done and then move on to something else. I'm not really sure... Um, what the next project is, but I definitely want to pick another author and go really deep into their um, their career. Possibly Ray Bradbury. I think maybe that because I actually have a volume of him back here, and then I don't have to buy anything else. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. I may take a break, um, do some other types of videos first. Um, but certainly, there's always going to be a, a literature and a short story angle to this channel. So if you like that sort of thing, please subscribe. And until next time, keep it creepy.